to be in Hollywood, and he saw how Hollywood producers actually like go to the top, and it's one of the most competitive uh, businesses in, in not in, in the world, but even in the states, and to even crack. So he said, like these are the people that I see and doing what they do. They use people and they, they, they do all of these. And he was in a very, very big position to understand these laws. And actually, he actually saw them happening around him. But he said, you know, if I use them, I, I mean, I should be somewhere, but I'm just a writer. So these laws, it's not like science. It's not like E equals MC squared. It's not like all the time going to be correct. And there's always the human aspect of it. So you can apply the same rule within a crowd. It, they might follow you. It may not work in another crowd. So sometimes, yes, you got to be lucky, I guess. Also, I think I think you like to say deception and manipulation. You're really focusing on the negative connotation of that. But what's so not manipulative or not succeeding that you basically tricking your kids and eating something else? That's manipulation. That is deception. Right? So it's not always negative. Through history, has a negative connotation, rightfully so. But again, it doesn't always have to be negative. After all, God made this the receiver of them, right? Exactly. And also, you have to respect it. That's why I love my children. presents his book from from my perspective, he really views it as like life is like conflict, battle, right? Like never reveal too much, never take this, never take that. And here I throw the question on you, is life a battle? Is life a battle? Is, is it conflict? No. I think life is a game and that's not different from battle. And if it is so, is it not right that uh, reaching whatever goal you need by any means necessary uh, is what is needed to do in a battle like you need to win yes that, that is correct I think it's uh, also we're looking at it from a different point of view. We're all uh, in a comfortable society. You're not fighting for your food. You're so if you're in a different situation where survival is is the key, you don't know what you're gonna do to grab somebody's sandwich or to steal. I've seen it and I've lived that, so I know what people could do and not do, and what you what I'm capable of doing to cure a loaf of bread. I would like to oppose you, you said that life is a battle, I believe it's a challenge instead. And by reading this book, you actually know who are your enemies better and uh, who are your allies. But if you just look at the book as a, a tool that you're going to use to win something, you're actually not using the book the right way. It's more of a guidance, you know, no, no more no less. For example, like, after I read the book, I, I felt like I questioned myself. Who is using the, these power against me? So it made me like think a lot and not actually do the thing which is like, intended to show you. So do not go fully with the book. Just take what you really need. And by going through the book, you will actually like see that some of these uh, aspects you already like follow. One thing that makes it gives it a negative connotation. Sometimes the use of so those words like deception and cunning, and we do it all the time, it's called persuasion, and uh, <laughs> those are positive words, so when there's a lot of stuff that, because they're using those base language, uh, people get uh, offended, also with our time to write them. Yes. Well, yes. I kind of agree with this. Uh, one thing Robert Greene said, 
like, uh, oh, it's a bunch of things, but I'll try to summarize according to what I see. Um, he signified that fear is better, is better than love. He signified that seduction is better than genuinity and uh, honesty. Um, basically, the theme of the book tries to tell you to have to establish a theme of control over things that you normally cannot. So, based on this, uh, what perspective is he coming from? Is it, is it a good perspective? Is it a genuine perspective? Is it a good perspective to view life? Well, it's not you, then there's someone else who will do it. So if you want to be in that position of power, you have to be against that competition. You have to have that to the very beginning when I was like everybody was introducing themselves uh, the gentleman in the back with the well-dressed tie uh, he said power is an illusion and what were you willing to, uh, to do to uh, to remove it right yeah like power is an illusion and you want to break from it mm -hmm. and I present to you this case is power an illusion yes or no and if so or not should we break from it is breaking from it a good thing? It depends what you want. I, mean, I think it's, it's really different from person to person and how they view it and what it means to them and what it will allow them to do. Uh, I don't know. I go over there. It's not a concrete sort of answer or definition. Or I agree with her illusion. It is actually an illusion, but not to the community. It's an illusion. So it is how you see power, and uh, if you see it the right way, it may it may like lead you to actually attain it. If not, then you're actually destroying yourself, thinking that you're powerful. Something else: Why does a person want to be powerful? What will they? Is it because will it make them feel better? Will they have? Will they be in a position to do something good out of it? Or what does it mean to them? I think with power you can help the powerless, like if you can do something with your power to benefit others around you, that's powerful in its own self. So I personally would be happy if I can help those that need the power and give them some of, quote, my power kind of thing. Maybe. I'm sure even the most adamant uh, who thinks that the power is an illusion, the idea that power is an illusion, practice power in one way. I mean, I mean, mothers want power on their children. Uh, your your boss needs power on, on the subject. Uh, the, the, the the government needs power on the, on the people. It's there, whether you like it or not. Calling it an illusion will not change a lot of things, but maybe 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 you have different things about it. But it's there, and 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 like deal with it or not understand how to. I think that's that's a better approach. Uh, um. Uh, for me, um, I think s most of the laws does not apply to us right now because we live in a sugar-coated society slash life right now. Like the gentleman, uh, what the gentleman behind me said, uh, we don't have to fight over uh, the food. Like, the, uh, what defines um, like poverty is uh, it's when you think, uh, how do I get my next meal? Like, I don't have right now how to get it. This is poverty. But right now we live in a, set, in a society that says, oh, what will I eat in my next meal? Like, I have everything. Like, I don't need power to survive. I just, I just need to live my regular life. My, the government pays me to, to, to just live happily and steady. We live in a very secure society. Um, uh, we don't have uh, currently like we don't have any wars, so we don't need m much of these laws to 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 navigate our life. Like, but maybe you're talking about Kuwait. Kuwait is a very safe. Yeah, I'm talking about 
us right here right now I'm not I'm not generalizing I'm not generalizing by any means like if we don't have to fight over the the, 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 the peace of blood we don't understand how this how deep are these laws like like fighting over a piece of food is something none of us lived or most of us never lived or never saw like it's horrifying it's terrifying people sell their children in order to get food you have to understand how how this world it was or some, somewhere in this uh, piece of world is 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 cruel and horrifying so sometimes sometimes these laws is what you exactly need in order to survive these these circumstances it, it depends on your ambition you're looking at a base level where there's like poverty and whatever you're looking at but how is more about food dynamics and hmm. your ambitions within that sometimes you don't need those ambitions like if you live a steady well-paid life ambitions is just a win more type of situation like i don't need this in order to achieve fulfillment in my life do most of us do Find, uh, yeah, it's it's I totally agree with you because like some people desire power, desire ambition, but most people, most people want to live a steady life. Uh, it's just. Uh, ambition right now is a win more type of situation like you don't it's not needed it's desire that's a good thing um, yeah but you just yeah. like you wanted to uh... oh um i think honestly a lot of these words power wealth prosperity adventure peace of mind they're very big blanket general terms that i think in like what you said can meet Literally in this room, we can go around the room right now and it can all give us a different definition of what happiness or power or wealth means. And so when you say, when you read a book that tells you how to get the 48 walls of power, you will automatically just say how it will get me the power that I think is right. So I might think the biggest form of power is not needing power at all. This is what happens then. Like, not, like, like you see how, like, these times that when we say is power an illusion or is power something that, uh, what did you say, like, is, uh, like a, a real thing that's uh, a, desire, a desire in the world. Uh, I think in many ways it's not an illusion so much as it's like a, it's a mirage. It's a concept that's real. We know that mira mirage is a concept are real. But we know that when we get to the garage, it's not there anymore. Like, I can, just sitting across the room right now, uh, give you three different, or four different, uh, entirely different concepts of power. And that doesn't make them any less true. It just makes them, I guess, uh, uh, let's say, they're philosophical, they're personal, they're not things they can actually hold or own. So I don't know, I mean, again, it's just, it's like, you know, Thomas said, it's entirely meant to sell you on what's in there. Uh, I was just thinking about your ultimate power, really. You just have to look at, uh, there's been recently a lot of countries where they changed the constitution and to extend the, the president's right to vote it again. And that, that's happened, like, for a whole load of countries. And you just have to see how the population is basically been manipulated into agreeing to this through referendum to give this power to this one one individual, and you see this in it. And and the, I guess the question is, why does the individual want to be there? What what do they get out of it? I mean, apart from money, which is sometimes the case. But often it's not really. It's just this complete desire to be in control and have power. Over you. And you see that, and people are people are very happy to give up their control because people are voting in referendums all the time. This happened, there's been two or three of them this year, this year in different countries to give power to an individual. And so it's, it's very, power persuasion is extremely powerful. Well, is it giving power or like giving responsibility? Because people, when, when you vote for them, you're like, you do the administration stuff, we deal with our leader. Well, I think that's what, that's exactly the way they, they, they sell it. 
but in reality, once you once you agree to that, essentially you've lost all control. You know, because you know so what you, all the control you, you had is gone. Why would you think that that he was bought from someone, whoever that shows them that he is responsible, that they can like so that 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 attracts people. If, I, if that figure, that person shows us as of oh, but looks like someone who can take the responsibility from the other that would be extremely attractive. Well, I don't think it's very, very much. Obviously, I don't know the answers, but but you know, pick Putin for an example, okay? Just like look at an example. There, I think Rus the Russian people felt disempowered. So they felt they, they like the fact that Putin has that power and brings respect to their country and through that they get some power themselves and some respect. You know, people look at, if you look at, and it's a different one, but look at China, the same happened again, they had, a, they had a vote there in China. And in China, again, pe Chinese people, you, you hear this a lot, feel that they get a lot more respect when they go around the world than they used to get. So yeah, they, get, they have a sense of empowerment themselves by giving power to somebody else. But in other locations, you get where basically a president comes in and he strips the people of their power and he, and he essentially rapes the country. And so you, you get different, different... Isn't that putting the right person in the right position? It, of course, but in the reality, these people don't care about whether they're the right person or not. They mean, look at Idi Amin or something I think like they do. Like Putin, like when he started the, the power, the average um, salary is like, I don't know, 2,000 rubles and in 10 years they're 29,000. So, he really raised the income and did a lot of good things for the, the people. So it was a good choice for well, them. Well, that's kind of what I'm meaning is that there's some some of the people have a genuine desire for succeed. Other people are just purely doing it for the sense of power and being in charge. And you you kind of you're throwing your dice and you just take it, your your luck when you when you vote to give that responsibility to somebody in the long term because you're saying at that point as soon as you've voted to change the constitution at that point you've lost control. And no, you no longer can take that back because you've written that person now has the ultimate power. And they may decide to give it up, or they may not. But isn't people who are like, uh, I mean, assigned with tasks that they can actually do, okay, they are responsible, they're not, uh, this is a responsibility given to them, and they can actually do what they're responsible of. Isn't that power, and which makes them powerful people? So responsibility falls under the category of being powerful. Um, I would change the subject a little bit. I'm just thinking that we, there, are, there is power everywhere, even if you don't know this For example, think about things like TV and American movies. Um, <laughs> it's placed in a high school setting where you have a bunch of like, cheerleader girls, uh, that one of them is their actual leader. And there are these other girls who want to get into the group, but they don't allow them. So it happens everywhere. You know, not. But then it's also an illusion at the same time. If you stop caring about that, then you strip them the power. Uh, they don't have the power in the world. So that's a different perspective. Uh, actually, to answer that question, I'll use the quote that I probably quote more than any quote ever uh, from Harry Potter. Uh, of course, it's happening inside your head, Harry, but why on earth would that mean it's not real? Like, a lot of power is mm, an illusion of sorts. It is psychological. In many ways, you can break out of it. And, but it's a very persistent illusion. You know, like Einstein said about reality, it's an illusion, but a very consistent one. Um, and I think that, that actually adds to the beauty of it, because all of these techniques, like most of them, if not all, are very subtle. They're not very forceful. And actually, the point uh, you made, which is uh, that uh, we will chase power forever, he actually did say it. He's like, what if? He's like, so the people would say that. What if we just chase power forever and we never get like, fulfilled? And he's like, that's because the way you're looking at power is wrong. You're mistaking aggressive action for effective action. Uh, it's all about subtleties. It's not about being forceful. It's it's very fragile, and being subtle about it is it's an art by itself. And I think that power being somewhat an illusion, or functional like an illusion, doesn't remove any of its merit. That's just its nature. Um, and again, it's a very consistent nature. So interestingly, uh, 